Chapter 1, Saturated Hydrocarbons. So here is the table of contents for Chapter 1 in your textbook. I will be separating these um, screencasts by section in the book. So section 1.1 will be separate from section 1.2. And that way, if, if you need to go back and listen to a lecture over again, you can go just to the parts that you need to hear. You don't have to necessarily listen to the whole thing or try to scrub through the whole thing. There's a lot of sections. Most of them are really short, though. The other thing I need to tell you is there's two versions of this book. This one is the second semester book. It's organic and biochemistry. The other one is general organic and biochemistry, and it has all that Chem 3A material in the front. And so in that textbook, this chapter 1 is actually chapter 12. So in some of the slides, you'll see um, like figure numbers and table numbers will be wrong because it'll say figure 12.1 instead of figure 1.1. I could go in and change all that, but it would be really, really tedious, so we're just going to overlook that. But if you notice that, that's why that is. They just did one set of slides for both books. Okay, so organic and inorganic compounds. Um, chemists use the word organic a little differently than we do in regular life which is common for many things. And, and just to remind you, um, these slides are available on Blackboard. So just write down as much as you need to, okay? Some people will say, oh, well, I'm just going to listen, and then I'll go and print those out later if I need to. But don't feel like you need to copy everything down, because these slides are almost straight from the publisher, and they're a lot wordier than the slides that I would make. But they would still make good notes for you. So, you know, there's I just let you know about that. So organic in real life, you go to the grocery store. Organic carrots. Okay, well, a chemist says all carrots are organic. Um, so it means something a little different. Organic chemistry is the study of hydrocarbons. And a hydrocarbon contains only carbon and hydrogen. Hence the name hydrocarbon. There's a lot of terms, um, and most of them are, have clues in them. So hydrocarbon containing hydrogen and carbon, and their various derivatives. So organic chemicals can contain elements other than carbon and hydrogen, but it's mostly the study of carbon-containing compounds. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of examples listed there. Some of these you may not think of as being organic, like rubber and petroleum, but those are organic compounds. So we can divide chemistry into organic versus inorganic. Inorganic is everything else, which sounds like, oh, that would be the majority of the stuff. But if we look at this pie graph, there are over 10 million organic compounds, and there's only about 1.7 million inorganic compounds. There's just an incredible variety of organic compounds. Now, at the grocery store, we tend to think of organic as safer because, you know, no pesticides, nothing bad like that. But in chemistry, a lot of pesticides are organic. Okay, so organic does not mean harmless in chemistry. So there's also some examples of inorganic compounds there. And feel free to stop, stop me and ask questions at any time. I love questions.